What's up, YouTube? We are back. I am Rashad. For most of you that don't know me, uh, today on this episode, we're going to be talking about my life for the 11 years I've been into the car hauling industry. So let's get to it. <music> So pretty much back in 2005, I graduated ECPI, which is a little technical school. I was working at the Raleigh Durham Airport in North Carolina. I was uh, pushing wheelchairs, a ticket agent and all that. So I paid my own way through school. I applied for a job with Lockheed Martin uh, in the telecommunications field, uh, you know, doing uh, government contracting work. So I applied for it and next thing you know, I got the job. I wasn't thinking I was gonna get it. I got it. Um, 95% travel. I had just closed on a house in Wake Forest, North Carolina, uh, two weeks prior, but I couldn't sell it because I just got it. So I decided to make it a business. I created Whitehead Properties, which is not that big. It's not on Bravo or nothing like that, but it's okay. Um, so I um, got the job, started doing traveling, and then around 2008 or so, uh, I decided I wanted to invest. I was making good money, over 95000 a year. Here I am, 22, 23, 24 years old. So I decided I don't really know too much about the stock market, so let me try to get into the field that my parents are, well, my dad and my two oldest brothers are in. So it was just trucking. Um, my second oldest brother, he sold me, it was a 2004 International 9900. Here it is, picture right here. Well, it's not the exact one. But um, he sold it to me and uh, I decided I wanted to try to get into it. My dad, he wasn't so much on board with it because he figured, hey, keep traveling the world, keep meeting beautiful women and keep just doing your thing. So, which is fine, like why can't I do that and make money at the same, I mean, make extra income at the same time. Like my dad is like, he's awesome. Like um, in his mindset, it's just like, yo, get you a good job or go to school, get you a good job and go to the ABC store on Fridays, get you a nice little shot and then go back to it on Monday doing the same thing. And it's just like, I love you pops, but I can't do that. So I uh, I decided to buy a truck for my brother. I think I, think I had a $18,000 credit card. My brother sold me the big truck for 15,000. I hadn't used the credit card. Um, I bought the big truck and I kept, uh, I got it going. My oldest brother, he had a company that he was working for that he told me about that I could get leased on to. And he also actually got me my first driver, which is Bobby. Bobby lasted with me for about eight years. Great driver, we worked hard together. Um, besides for the truck being broke down every other week or so, and tires costed everything, but I had to push through. So um, when we did have bad weeks, Luckily, I had my telecommunications job um, able to help keep me afloat and going. So uh, we did that for a while. And then around in, I think it was 2013, I was working in Masawa, Japan. And pretty much I needed another truck. The truck had broke down. So I decided to apply for a truck at Virginia Truck Center in Roanoke, Virginia. And I had uh, got approved for it. The lady, she sent me my approval letter. As you can see, the interest rate is kind of crazy, but I was desperate. So, okay, cool. Um, got the truck for Bobby, he got rolling. Um, I got approved for another truck later on, which is this truck right here. And um, pretty much things were going a little bit better, trying to find another driver here and there. And it was just like, okay, cool. Things are starting to pick up. Then. Not Bobby, but another driver, he'll quit. And I got two trucks and then one truck is sitting and then I'll have two more drivers and then try to buy another truck. Uh, this truck right here, which is an International Pro Star, I met that through my millionaire mentor, Mr. Barry. He uh, he had the truck sitting, I went to visit him one time. He's like, I'm not sure Mr. Barry's age, but he's like 70 years old or so. Um, went to visit him one time, he had a truck just sitting in the field. Now he deals with, tobacco, cotton, hotels, all this stuff out there in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Great guy. 
like the biggest mentor that's been ever to help me, you know what I mean? So I really appreciate that. So he had the truck sitting there and I asked him about it and he was like, yeah, I'm not doing anything with it. Go ahead and use it. Start making some money with it and get going. Okay, cool. So uh, I tried to start putting the truck to work and everything. Drivers was quitting, trucks was breaking down. This truck had a death system issue where it was breaking down like literally every three other weeks. I mean, $1,500 here, uh, $3,000 here, another $5,000, $8,000 tires it was when i say the struggle was real it was real so luckily i didn't have a payment with it because mr barry had loaned it to me to get going so um I, I was very appreciative of that but like i mean it was just harder and harder while dealing with trucks and trying to deal with my telecommunications job so uh, i remember one day i was in phoenix arizona uh me and my boy josh um we was working on a job, we was leaving for work at 6.30, well actually it was 3.30 in the morning because I was in Phoenix and my trucks was here in, uh, in Virginia area. And I get a call and pretty much one of the drivers was driving one of my trucks and he was like, hey man, the truck is not working. I'm like, well, what do you mean, what's wrong? I was like, have you checked the, the, the oil, the, the water, coolant? Like, oh no, I haven't checked this since I got the truck from you because I couldn't open the hood. And it's like, what? Are you serious? And pretty much he blew the engine. So literally I had to sit there at three, four o'clock in the morning trying to call roadside uh, truck repair service to move the truck literally, I would say five or six miles down the road with a load on it. And that was, I think that was $2,500 I had to spend just that morning, you know what I mean? Just cause the driver, I wouldn't say stupidity cause that's wrong, but stupidity really because like you couldn't open the hood or tell me about it like you know you got to check the oil in the coolant and check all your stuff but so i dealt with that that breakdowns is just crazy all right so let's move forward all right so i uh after i got the trucks and everything um hit and miss uh my dad like i said he helped me with uh also getting a i think i paid ten thousand dollars for my first flatbed trailer so, you know, drums, bearings, straps, all that stuff, it came into play. And it was like, when I say it was hard, it was hard. But uh, we're moving back. I went back to Japan to finish up with telecommunications and stuff different times. And um, I decided to buy a truck. Uh, I felt that, you know, how you feel like you're that business owner and like, okay, I got big trucks that I might need to move tires here and there, even though I don't like trying to get my hands dirty. Just play it. I bought a pickup truck. It was a uh, 2009 Ford F-350. And while I was in Japan, I had it shipped. Uh, I picked, bought it in Dallas. Uh, it was shipped to Atlanta. Um, and then while I was still in Japan, I decided to go ahead and have it tricked out the way I want to. Like, I didn't like that white brown look, as you can see right here. So I had to get it tricked out the way I was going to. I call it Stormtrooper, in a sense. Um, I wanted it to look good. It had 24 inch alcohol wheels on it. I uh, got back to the U.S. I was driving it around military bases, doing my government contracting work, um, Fort Benning and stuff like that. And I pretty much always saw trucks carrying trailers, open cars and stuff like that, always up 85, 95. And I'm like, you know what? They uh, they making some, some money with all of these cars. So I was like, let me try to keep doing my my uh, my regular job, doing the contracting work, and hire a driver. So. I decided to go online, uh, Indeed, uh, I went to Craigslist too, um, just trying to find somebody that's actually been in the business that can kind of show me what I needed to do. You know, of course, a lot of people out here don't really want to help somebody else because they feel that fear of, you know, like competition or something like that. So I reached out, I mean, I put an ad out there and then pretty much my guy, Everett Mann, he, he helped me out to the fullest and I appreciate him big time. Um, he showed me what trailer I need to get. I got the Kaufman with the uh, the three car with the pop down, making a four car. I got a, brought a brand new one and, uh, in uh, 2013. Um, so that was my first load, like October 2013. I got my first load going. I went from the 24 Alcoas down to the 22 fives. Got things rolling. Um, Ever did good. Uh, in a sense, it was doing good. I'm still trying to learn the business. He taught me about Central Dispatch. He taught me about uh, straps, uh, everything you need to know about clientele and all this stuff. And pretty much I was trying to learn the business and do my job at the same time. And um, he knew about, like he knew this already, he knew this business. So 
I was trying to learn from him and everything. Uh, I would say a couple years passed that I'm still trying to catch up, trying to see black, it's always been red, and it just wasn't working. So um, I can't remember how long it's been, but we, we kind of parted ways on things or whatnot. And like, again, still my guy, I appreciate him to the end. Um, we parted ways and then I decided I wanted to try to do, um, I, was, I was still working at my job. And one day, I, was, I remember the day like it was yesterday, I was sitting at L3 Communications in Alpharetta or Cumming, Georgia. And I was sitting in this comm closet, which we, what we did was, is, you can see it kind of a, what I did was is we ran cables from like points up in the ceiling down and stuff like that. And me and my boy Josh, we were sitting there and I mean, it was like close to a thousand tape cables. We had to terminate each end and plug into, you know, the different routers and stuff like that. And I was just sitting there one day, and then this, um, I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, he came in and he told us, hey, y'all go to lunch. Now, mind you, I'm sitting here trying to work with my big trucks and with Everett, um, I only had like one big truck running at the time, so I'm trying to see what drivers is at. I, there was a building I couldn't have my phone in. So I'm trying to see what drivers are at and stuff like that and make sure everything's good and make sure everybody's got whatever they need. And uh, so I would go on my little 15 minute break and the, the supervisor, he would always see me running back and forth to my car whenever I could. And he had something to say. And he was like, oh, well, make sure you, uh, make sure you do what you gotta do and instead of like Rashad running back to your car or something. And that kind of hit, that, that kind of hit me like, really dude, are you serious? You know I got a business now. You know, I respect your elders, but man, I wanted to tell him like, dude, you mad because I got a business and oh, I'm trying to have a business and you sitting here working for another company that, you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. We paying for a nice infinity pool for the owner of this company that we're working for, but whatever. Um, so to move forward, uh, I was sitting there one day and pretty much it hit me. He told, he came in, was like, hey, go to lunch. If y'all come back, you gonna, I'm gonna write you up. And I'm like, I'm a grown man, dog. You gonna sit there and try to write me up? Like, come on now. And then that day, I didn't have much in savings. Uh, I didn't know what to do. I didn't have a plan, but I was like, you know what? Let's try it, you know? I don't have no kids, no wife, I'm single. So what if, if, if it's the time, the time is now. So I did it. I put my two weeks notice in, of course. He was like, oh man, we gotta, we gotta, um, we gotta finish the job up. So we, we need you to be here. And I'm like, well, you just told me not to be late and all this stuff. I don't got time for that. So I appreciate you, but this is my last, this is my last two weeks. So I finished that up and I think it was pretty much the best move I've ever made. So y'all know that I bought the truck back in 2012. So we're gonna fast forward up to like um, 2014. Um, pretty much like the beginning of 2014, uh, I was trying, I, I, went, I went back to Virginia, to my parents' house, stayed there trying to figure out my plan of what I'm gonna do. Um, got the truck, uh, you know, that I had Everett driving and everything. Um, just trying to see, trying to make it work, you know. Um, I didn't have CDLs, I was trying to sit there, I'm not trying, hypothetically, uh, I was doing some open car runs, like this wasn't for me. So uh, I got, uh, contacted my boy, Troy Anderson. I appreciate him big time also, cause he helped me when I was down as well. I uh, contacted him, he had a, um, a little wooden one car enclosed trailer, no side escape door, nothing like that. Nothing special that since I had central dispatch and I was on the open car side, I was like, let me try to do enclosed. You know, I had the F-350 that I had. And um, I was gonna give it a try. And um, I used his trailer, like he used it for track, for his Porsche 944 track car. So he let me use it for a little bit and we got the rolling. Uh, he helped me out on runs and stuff like that too. Um, we was rolling uh, like around, I would say April of uh, 2014. My, my uh, turbos blew, cause I had, when I say I hooked this uh, F-350 up whenever I was in Japan, I mean, I had big turbos, thanks to Rudy's Diesel performance right there in Durham, North Carolina. Appreciate them, um, I, I hooked it up. We had bigger turbo, it was deleted, everything. Um, so the turbo blew on me and I was like, if it's not one thing, it's another. So that happened. Um, my sister, my mom was riding with me. We was coming back from St. Louis. We broke down in Evansville, Indiana. 
So the truck broke down, blowing out all this white smoke. Turbos is messed up. Um, it's gonna cost me a lot of money to fix. So we rent a rental car, I get back to uh, Virginia, I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. Push come to shove, I get the truck uh, towed into Raleigh, North Carolina. We take it to Capital Ford, so there's no way of like trying to trade this in on another truck because it's just blowing out all this white smoke. So we, um, uh, there was a truck there, it was a 2013 Ford F350 that I had um, purchased and my sister, she gave me a $10,000 down payment to go for it because here I am broke as I don't know what, so I can't, can't piss my sister off. So I very appreciative of her and all her help. But we got the truck, 2013, got rolling, kept, kept grinding into the business. You know, I was moving with this one car, Troy's one car enclosed, I was moving cars left and right. I mean, 75 cents a mile, 80 cents, a dollar a mile here and there, dollar 25. Now this is before all these gas prices that it is right now. So I was moving all that and um, just trying to just trying to get my name out there in the business. And pretty much uh, I decided I want to try to put that truck back with my my uh, three car wedge and see if I'm putting a driver to work. Um, one of the guys back in Virginia, one of my old big truck drivers, he had told me about another guy, young guy. Uh, I think he was like 23, just got his class A. 20, 23, 24, just got his class A. Uh, he wanted to get out there and start transporting. I was like, okay, cool. Just had a baby, you know, engaged or married or something like that. Um, I was like, you know what, let's give it a try. So we was getting his first load together and everything. Um, we was in Greensboro, North Carolina at the Manheim. Remember it like it was yesterday. My buddy Reggie uh, had drove me out there to meet the driver. Everything was good. We got all three cars loaded up on the trailer. He was headed to Houston, Texas. So we're driving down, uh, I think it's business 40. Driving down 40 and um, Reggie was like, hey man, take a, look at, take a look at that. That's your equipment going down the highway. Um, just, you know, making you money. It's like, it's a great thing to see that, right? I was like, you know what, it is. So we go on down the road, not 10 minutes go by. The driver calls me back and I'm like, you know, what's up? Hey man, you might want to turn around, I've just, pretty much turned over your whole rig. I was like, what, are you serious, bro? And yeah, came back, he came in too hot on a curve. The next thing you know, what you see on Instagram, YouTube, all these trucks that it's kind of top heavy, he came in too hot, tipped the whole thing over. So, it ain't one thing is another, right? So that happened and uh, so I'm talking to the driver and I'm like, hey man, what happened? He's like, oh, you know, I, I came in too hot and of course, they're going to come up with anything they can on the top of their head because you wasn't there. Oh, and this, this car was on my tail, so I was speeding up and I didn't know the curve was too much there. And then a deer ran out and yeah, it was a unicorn on the deer. So, you know, just all kinds of bullshit. Anyways, um, so I was like, okay, cool. Well, you know, since we're DOT and everything, we got we to gotta do a drug test for you and all that. You're going to pass and everything, right? Yeah, of course. Four days go by, of course, he did not pass the drug test. So that was the headache. All right, cool. Um, so we're moving forward. The truck is total loss. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. It came at a good time, but it didn't come at a good time because I was behind on my payments trying to make it work with fuel, insurance, all that stuff. So I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say it. I was behind on my payments and them totaling it out, having gap insurance, it kind of made a little bit of a, a rest of a burden off of me in a sense. So the trailer was needed to be fixed and everything. And I got it at the shop trying to get repaired and I'm trying to find money to get the trailer out the shop. It was like $8,000 in repairs. Now, mind you, insurance was trying to cover it or whatever, but for some reason it didn't happen. And the tra I lost the trailer that way because the shop took it over, took title over and all that stuff. So that was a downfall right there, but yet, um, my buddy Troy, we had his truck. I had the one car trailer. Troy had a two car enclosed also. So he was using that left and right. Um, just moving fast forward, uh, pretty much that's when it came down. Um, I have a, my buddy named Larry. He uh, was an investor type deal. He wanted to get into it. Not really, just want to hire a driver. So I bought another truck from the same brother. I brought the 18 wheeler from the big truck, the international. I bought his blue F-350 that's pictured here. 
uh, well, Larry bought it, uh, I should say, and I was going to be the driver. And then Larry, we also bought a um, wooden 24 foot enclosed trailer. So we bought the trailer, got the rig going, and um, started making money with that. Still getting my name out there, hustling hard, you know, late nights, doing what I got to do. Um, this this trailer we bought from South Georgia, just a little wooden trailer for like 8,500 bucks. Tried to keep it clean. It was blue. It was nice. It was matching the truck and trailer, so the rig looked good. And that's the biggest thing, trying to have a good appearance. But when I say it was hard, I mean, we had that trailer, I was rocking left and right. So I was on my way to Dallas one day and um, I had a Lamborghini Huracan in the trailer. Next thing you know, I look back, I look at the side of me, there's a car was like, hey, you're, you know, your roof is flapping. I look back and literally the roof has peeled up and the, the whole thing is just flapping. Now, here I am in between Atlanta and Dallas and I gotta get this car dropped off because I got another one I gotta take back. And I'm on the side of the road trying to use Gorilla Tape to tape it down and everything. And it just, it was not working at all. So that went through. Um, I tried to tried to get it to go get taped down and it wasn't working. So I pretty much ripped the whole top of the roof off. So, so I just keep going. And I'm delivering to like this little dealership. But it's the daughter of the owner of the dealership who's accepting the car. Who It's her car, her birthday gift. So I park away from the dealership so no salesman or nothing would come out to see me unloading this car. And sure enough, the daughter pulls up in her, I think she had one of those Range Rovers or whatever, and she pulls up. Next thing you know, uh, she's like, oh, is this my car? I've been waiting on it. Like, And then she sees that the half of the roof is gone. So of course, I had to come up with a, a quick thought of, off the head. Like, you know, I was like, hey, yeah, so I'm, that's what you call an awning for the trailer. It's like a moon roof, sunroof, so that the trailer can breathe and you know it helps get your car ready for delivery. So it's just push a button and a tarp comes up and closes up. And she's like, oh, that's so cool. And not nothing against blonde, but she was blonde. But um, but yeah, I'm like, okay, that, that worked. So we kept going, kept pushing, and uh decided to put a driver in that truck and trailer. A guy named Travis. And uh Things was going, still hustling, hustling. Travis goes to Minneapolis and never really dealt with black ice before and crashes the truck and trailer. Cool, truck and trailer sits up there um, trying to get uh, insurance to take care of stuff. Of course, they're taking forever. Next thing you know, um, kind of lose that truck as well because I couldn't afford to pay to get it out and I'm paying 2,000 here, 3,000 here. The bill's like $15,000 to get the truck back right. Cosmetic wise, engine, all that, it was like $15,000. Pays the bill, have a have a, somebody go pick the truck up um, to bring it back down, and the truck is messed up. Like, it's still messed up. So they have to keep the truck there, and I couldn't afford to pay no more. So I lost that truck, yep. So, well, I'm sorry, I lost Larry's truck. And we're still good, I appreciate Larry for everything. Um, so we're moving forward. <laughs> Now I really have no truck, but I have kind of owner operators that kind of working with me and we're using, I'm using their trucks here and there and stuff like that. Then I got another buddy named Keith that um, I appreciate him because he's the one who bought Brutus. Um, he was trying to get into the business. Um, he thought he could do it. He had just retired from the, the state in uh, Louisiana. So uh, we bought Brutus uh, with 45 miles on it. Uh, we got going, and then he also bought, he was the one who bought the uh, first side door open enclosed trailer from TSI Trailers. Y'all go check them out if y'all looking for a trailer. A very nice trailer for hauling cars. But um, we got that truck and trailer going, and Keith was doing it. I think Keith did it for about a year or so, and then, you know, his daughter was having kids, and he wanted to be a grandfather, which is fine. So he decided to go back to doing all that in Louisiana. And I kept over the truck and I decided to do a kind of lease purchase and I bought Brutus from him. And, um, but yeah, I've been rocking and rolling with Brutus ever since. And of course, that's why I had 750,000 miles on the truck. Um, but we'll get into Brutus all later on in another video of uh, that, that lifestyle for Brutus. But pretty much um, got rolling um, and I was doing a central dispatch and just still grinding, still grinding. Next thing you know, my boy Mike, while I was over in Japan and stuff like that, I had an Audi S8. So my bike, my boy Mike Roth, 
he uh, he was working as a service advisor at Audi. So he would keep my car while I'm traveling, this and that. So we became real good friends. Then he moves over to Ferrari of Atlanta. And once he moved over to Ferrari of Atlanta and I was doing my thing, he was like, hey, why don't you come move some of my cheaper cars, like the 430, I mean, they're not cheap, but they're a lot cheaper than a million dollar lot Ferrari. So, so uh, I was like, sure. So it's got in, just started just grinding, keeping my head on straight and, that was pretty much it. It was all in who you know, really. And um, it was just grinding. And I appreciate Mike, because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be where I'm at with now with Ferrari of Atlanta. So he's a big part of why I am here today, you know, being very blessed and thankful and successful. So um, grinding hard with Ferrari of Atlanta, trying to get the clientele up and stuff like that. And just trying to keep my head on straight. We was just rocking and rolling. Things are going good. And next thing you know, um, we're buying another trailer. Uh, we're getting kind of guys that, you know, like working as a team in a sense. And everything is moving good. Um, I link up with my, this is like around 2017, 18, 19 era. Um, I meet up with my guy, Jason Moore. He uh, He's out of Huntsville, Alabama. He's a retired SWAT police. And um, I pretty much saw his uh, picture on Instagram. And my thing is, is with this is like, I get a lot of messages on Instagram. I'm not the guru of transport. A lot of people look at me differently, like either I'm doing it wrong or they don't like the way I'm doing business, this and that, I really don't care. At the end of the day, anybody who messaged me on Instagram, whether you're 12, 14, 16, 18, 35, 80, whatever, it doesn't matter. Like I try to respond to almost anybody and everybody because you never know who's gonna, you know, either give you business, know somebody that can give you business, 14 year old kid can have a grandfather that has a massive car collection that they can use you. All it takes is just a little bit of time to respond back. So I reached out to Jason. He had a nice truck and trailer. I had never really seen him out there in the business doing the same thing I'm doing. So he has this $100,000 truck, $30,000 trailer. So I reached out to him. Hey, Jason, you know, uh, I see you out there grinding. Keep your head up. I see you just now starting. If you got any questions, hit me up. So he did, he hit me up, was like, hey, this is what I'm doing, I'm a police officer full time, but I try to do this on the weekends. And in my mindset, like, you can't do this in the, on the weekends. You know, we'll get into that part later on for the beginners that's trying to do um, this car hauling thing, and we'll get into all that on the next video. But, so Jason hit me up, and next thing you know, we're rocking and rolling. Jason stuck with it for about a year or so. And it's not hard, it's just that when you have a family, he has a wife, and two daughters and that's in college and stuff like that. So he really needed to kind of be home, you know, with the wife and stuff, cause she was in a bad accident, but not telling all their business, of course, but he needed to be home with her or whatnot. So I pretty much did the same thing. Lease purchase with uh, the 450, the one that I was just recently in the accident with. And um, pretty much that was, that was it. Uh, we still grinding, uh, hiring on people. Um, when, I, when it comes down to like owner operators or you know people working with you team wise, I appreciate everybody. Um, people look at me, like I said, it, it may be that they, they trying to count the money that I make. They don't look on the outside looking in or how much I'm spending for, whether it's $800 a month for the trailer lot, you know, insurance, fuel, uh, all the different stuff that I pay for. Of course, owner operators pay for fuel and everything too. But, you know, just like the little small stuff, um, paying for lunches at Ferrari, Velocity, um, Vengeance Racing, all these different people that it costs $300 or more to cater some food for a bunch of group of guys that you want to say thank you for their business. So that's what I do on the other end aspect of it. But you also got people that I wouldn't say negative in a sense, but they, I don't know if they don't want you to grow or what, but. Like I bought a trailer and I bought the red Audi S5 like on the same day, not knowing that the trailer was, I mean, during the same time, you know, credit still trying to build it up. It was jacked up, don't get me wrong, from when I was sitting there struggling. And my dad co-signed on that. And you know what I mean? I still got that. I saved up my money for my Audi S5. I live, you know, like I said, I live within my means or whatnot, but I live, you know, you only live once. So, you know, the Audi S5, I bought it. I, I look at it as a marketing tool, something I could take to car shows. Um, 
pretty much put flyers out, get get business to show other low rider, air ride cars that hey, we can transport your cars as well. So, but all all during that time when I bought the truck and trailer from Texas, that same day, I had three or four people quit on me, like like stop doing business with me, owner operators, like just done. And it was probably all the stuff about it, behind it, but we're not gonna get into that. It's just so when you're spend when we're spending thirty thousand dollars or so on a side escape door, one car enclosed unit, it's not about bragging or nothing like that. It's just it's just trying to, you know, just make yourself look good, presentable, and you don't have to worry about competing with other people because either the client's gonna call you or either they're not gonna call you. They're gonna pay your price or not gonna pay your price. And it's as simple as that. So we had the, um, moving forward, we, uh, I had the 26 inch wheels. A lot of people say uh, the accident would have just, wouldn't have been as bad if I had factory wheels on it, but it's, it's neither here or there. The main thing is the car was delivered safe and sound. Um, the truck is getting fixed now, trailer's getting repaired now. Nobody died on me or Alex's crew part. Um, so yeah, it's just, that's, that's the biggest thing. Like, and people fail to realize too, like whenever you're sitting there dealing with that one thing, the big accident, you know, got to get this car to Miami. Here it is, 19 degree weather, uh, trying to find help. I appreciate Steel getting out there to help us get get to Texas. Then I appreciate my guy, Chad. He was there to uh, pick us up from Texas and get it on down to Miami with me. But all at that same time, I'm dealing with, um, you know, a scratched bumper uh, at, with one of the other drivers at Ferrari. I'm dealing with a $40,000 American Express bill that's gotta be paid that following Friday. And people don't realize that. They look at they look at you, the power of social media is crazy. They look at you like you don't have these issues. Little that they know, like two two years or so ago, like this apartment right here. I was paying rent like, you know, on the eighth and ninth. Like you waiting on in you waiting on invoices to come in and people don't see that. You know, it's not that you sitting there on Instagram trying to show off or be bigger than what you are. It's just like, yo, the realness is out there. Like past due bills is coming, uh, insurance, you know, like all this stuff. $2,500 a month in insurance for just one rig by itself. Um, just different stuff. This is commercial insurance, by the way. But um, yeah, I was dealing with all that stuff with the accident, but you know what? What you gotta to come to with the realization is just like, it's just stuff. And you, you, just, you just gotta do it, you know? Like, so, I just keep pushing, you know? Like, I know that there's somebody right now, at this current moment, that there's a transporter, hot charter, car hauler, that's sitting at the kitchen table with the wife, you know, kids, or whatever it may be, just on central dispatch, on a load board, knowing, seeing these rates, seeing fuel prices, and they, they, they sitting there struggling, and they think that they're the only ones that's struggling, and pass through bills, and, uh, the truck pavement is behind and afraid the repo man is coming. Like, they're not the only ones. Like, that shit is real. Like, I've had to deal with it and I still deal with it in the sense of I'm blessed that I got Ferrari of Atlanta, Velocity, uh, Restorations. Diff these, two are, these two are my biggest clients. And it's all about hard work, just presenting yourself in a, a professional manner and just trying to, trying to do good, you know, trying to provide a good business. Like, on my Instagram, for example, yeah, I try to show personal, also mixed with business to show that I'm not a robot, just strictly straightforward business. Like have some laughter, you know, live life, joke around, but you know, keep your business and your personal separate as in this fact of like, you don't see, you know, just, you know, girls twerking on your page and stuff like that when you have millionaires and billionaires and people that follow you and stuff. So you just gotta be professional, presentable, show that you about business. And I, I mean, I got the owner of Ferrari of Atlanta that follows me on, on YouTube and on um, Instagram. And it's a, it's a big look for me, but it shows him that Rashad is just not a, a transporter that's out here to get a check. Like I'm up at three o'clock in the morning going to pick up a roadside Ferrari and you know what I mean? Showing details for the client and just trying to, you know, just build my brand also while making Ferrari of Atlanta brand looks good as well. So I'm very appreciative for Webb, the owner of Ferrari Atlanta. And I'm just, you know, like I said, just striving to do better and be better. And that's it.
know. But pretty much the next video that we have, um, this was just a sum up of what I had to go through, drivers wise and stuff like that, trucks breaking down and everything. Pretty much just know that y'all are not the only ones dealing with it. Tow truck drivers, you got my, all my people that's on the West Coast, um, everybody that's trans truckers, uh, transporters, car haulers, hot shots, just keep striving. I mean, keep doing it. It's easy for me to say that's probably what y'all thinking, but no, I'm, I'm dealing with the same thing. You know what I mean? So y'all, to, um, to sum this all up, I appreciate everybody where it comes to mom, uh, my dad, um, I didn't tell you about this. I had to, since the trucks were uh, kind of getting almost, you know, almost repoed or whatnot, I had to get help. I appreciate my guy, Rick, that stepped in and gave me like a $117,000 loan that I recently just paid off, which I'm very thankful for that. Um, so that's another milestone, but Rick, we got Larry that helped me out with the, the blue F-350. We got Keith that helped me out with current Brutus. So I'm appreciative to all these guys. Of course, Mike Roth, Velocity Restorations, Ferrari of Atlanta. And you know, I'm not getting an Emmy or an Oscar right now, no slapping. But you know, what pretty much what it comes down to is just like, you know, I appreciate other transporters that's uh, pretty much all over the US. And like I said, I, I just work hard to keep my Instagram up, meaning, cause that's, that's free social media, that's free marketing why not use it to its full advantage you know what i mean y'all see all my stories that ones that do follow me if you don't follow me go follow me on high end halls on instagram i appreciate that but um at the end of the day yeah just keep striving you're not the only one that's out here that's struggling it's a business i know a lot of people that's getting out of the business right now the fuel prices the uh the loads on central dispatch has been crazy so i can't be appreciative enough that I've worked hard to get to the point that I am, that I have repeat clients. I'm very appreciative for my clients that pay my prices, that don't complain. They, they still complain, some of them do. But at the end of the day, they know what kind of service that they're getting. Again, I'm not the greatest, the, the best transport in the world, but I strive to be, you know what I mean? Like, I want this business to work. And I don't look at it as a business, I look at it more as a hobby, really. Like, you know, you come. I'm coming from a small country town Red Oak, Virginia, you know what I mean? And it's like, I'm driving Pagani's, Bugatti's, Ferrari's, stuff like that. I'm not, like, that's just a kid's dream to ever do something like that. So it's, it's not that bad. I love it. It's, I tell anybody who ever gets into this business, which I will on the next video again, um, it's gonna be hard. First, first few years, like the millionaire mentor told me, this is your baby, like, like that first eight years, like, yeah, you gonna be crying, like, yeah, I was crying in a Walmart parking lot, waiting for fuel, and you know I was robbing Peter to pay Paul and deposit a check, a five hundred dollar check to get two hundred dollars to pick up a run that only paid three fifty and stuff like that. So we're not gonna get back on to that, but it's hard, you know. So keep your head up, do what you gotta do, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.